I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. What's up? I'm voting for Kanye. I don't really do politics, but I'm voting for Kanye. This this motherfucker run for president, bro. He got my vote, guaranteed. This nigga said 21 Jump Street changed his life. <laughs> Son, he's a wild boy. Yo, but we, well, let's let's start a little bit more, right? Let's get it popping. We are live. <laughs> Good evening. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy day in the sun. I hope you got some of that good sure. shit today. It's like 60 degrees in the northeast coast. You said what? It's like 60 degrees today in the northeast coast. <laughs> One of the first good days of spring out here. I hope you got you a nice walk in. Not you, Chris, the viewers. I know you got your walks in. Yeah. Um. Uh, well, shit, man. Happy to have you guys. I mean, what a day. What a day. Let's set the mood. Man. Okay. Welcome to another episode of Smoke Section. Go on, twist some, go on, sip some. You heard? Let's go get him again. Let's go. 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 Nah, 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 nigga, I'm not the road, so the wings and things you think about, bring them out, yes, ladies and gentlemen, what more can we say? It's another Sunday. We back with the heat. I don't know what they told you. But yeah, it's boy, winter time coming through with the fire. Hi. You know what's going on, guys? It's, we see we got David in the chat already and Anthony in the chat already. What's good, y'all? Happy Sunday. I hope the world's been treating you well. I hope the world is treating you better than a couple other people. Oh, uh, what you what you doing in Yammy, bro? What you doing in the Yammy? They hate that shit, by the way. <laughs> he was in like, like, yeah, yo. Out there with Ross. Yeah, y'all was talking business, I hope. Hey, how was your week, man? What kind of trouble you get yourself into? I ain't get myself in no trouble, boy. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't out here for trouble. I, I got to photograph a couple things. I went back to the cemetery. You know, that's a project I've been working on long term. Mm -hmm. Out there, found a bone yesterday. They trying to say it might be a bone to, a, to an animal. We in a cemetery. I don't think I'm gonna go with the bones of an animal. But you know, to each his own. My man said he found a femur in the forest. This is the second time I found a uh, a bone out there. What's up, Jim? Did you take it home? Negative, Ghost Rider. I don't need that bad juju following me to the crib. It might be good luck. Well, I don't, I'm not willing to find out. Thank you. <laughs> I should start shaking in the room by itself. Hey, man, you might find some superpowers with it, man. You, you've been you've been trying to activate your abilities, right? Yeah, uh, that ain't the one I want. Okay. That yeah. ain't. It. I don't need nobody bones in my crib. You got. <laughs> Yo, actually, speaking of bones, tell me you've seen that movie, the, the classic Snoop. With Snoop? Yeah. yeah. Who didn't see that? All right, all right. Why are there so many New Yorkers in Miami? It's cheaper. It's cheaper. It was cheaper, but they want to live. It's easier for them to live this uh quick life. That the fake it till you make it shit. It's kind of hard to beat a beach as your background. You you feel me? For sure. <laughs> it's hard to, hard to beat that. But they they out there struggling just like every other New Yorker that's trying to make it work. Yes, it man. Personally, I don't know. I've I've been to Miami like twice in my life. Mm -hmm. 
not even not never been too crazy about the whole uh what's that shit called uh spring break spring break vibes i wasn't even crazy about that in college my friends were but yeah they really the move i mean some people like it you know if y'all like it i love it do your thing but you know i went when i went out there i went out there for art battles that was my first time um in miami ever and uh it was it was pretty fucking decent for, for what it for what it was worth um but talking with the people that's from miami that live out there you know they're like yo it's two parts to miami that ain't it like the south beach part is its own is its own shit. so you know then i left the beach to go see what else miami had ended up in little haiti taking making work so i i, I enjoyed that more than i enjoyed going to the beach that shit get boring real quick <laughs> well for sure man especially if you're used to the beach that part it should get born real quick but i'm glad you went out there and made some money bro it's good to go to miami and make money i was just walking around and got picked for a job in miami that's how i got to photograph snoop son it was like hey you look like you look like a professional photographer what you doing tonight <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> want to come to this event this rebel event we'll pay you me and me and uh me and carlos had carlos come as my assistant real quick cut him off some bread mm-hmm. we were just walking around so i mean it's opportunity day I respect that shit. I'll get around to it again one of these days. Nigga, just be outside. You know, you know my motto. Yeah, I'm I'm starting to get back outside. I um I'm wrapping up my projects, getting to the next things. So cigar too, and that's fire. <laughs> what kind of cigar, Ant? Was it a regular cigar? Or was it the devil's lettuce. This guy here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Also, this week, um, you know, I put out into the universe just last week. I was like, y'all want to manifest in the opportunity to photograph on some movie sets or TV show sets. And then a couple of days ago, I walk into the, to the spot and go get my coffee and shit from and I get uh, I get eat my breakfast. I go upstairs to eat my breakfast. And the dude see the camera. He traveled. Around, he said, hey, we're filming something in here and such and such. And I wanted to know if you'd be, you know, open to getting shooting some BTS for it. Look at that. Man, if universe had a hand, I'd dap that shit, you heard? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, I spent the whole day with them. Shooting they some cool people. They're trying to get a pilot off the ground, which is not an issue. I have no problem with that, but that was my starting to get my, my 100 hours that I need to be looked at by the local 600 or so, they say. Um, I'm ready. I How was- many you put in? I was there pretty much all day. Nice. So I guess you can say eight, nine, whatever. Nice. There was like, I ended up going from the unit still photographer to being the DP. How crazy is that, bro? <laughs> we fucking do it. That's why, boy. <laughs> I was like, yo, let's move over here. Let's try it. I think this framing at this focal length will be better for this. We need to build some tension between this. And I'm doing all these things and I'm letting the other homie film it while I'm showing him what to do. Like, do you want to just? No, you do it. I'm just going to show you how to do it. Yeah. You know, but it did inspire me a little bit to definitely uh, double back down on my on my screen, right? On my screenplay, right? Good. Because I definitely got, like, I still got mad ideas. So I'm hyped for that. And then I'm I'm still uh, sending emails out to different units, still photographers. Some write me back, some don't. Some, um, at the end of it all, I found out that ult- there's ultimately two of the best ways to get in the local 600 for this shit is one is the easiest one one of these units still photographers could just vouch for you that's it that's really another gateway the second one is um you put the time and you put 100 hours in you promote yourself sending these shits to different people that you could shoot it and just hope for the opportunity and ultimately somebody else will still have to bring it I mean, I'm, just, I'm just gonna keep shooting the shit bro just keep doing the work man that's all I'm. That's all I can do. I'm gonna just keep doing my part, and if it, if it if it happens, it happens. If it don't, it don't. But I enjoy shooting. I had mad fun. <laughs> always meets preparation, man. You getting there? The closer you get to the hundred, the closer you'll get to being consistent with it. Just keep going. You got that shit, man. On today's segment of uh, the Nigga News Network. <laughs> I know everybody present has seen the fucking news of Jonathan Majors, bro. 
At least most people. I don't know about Jim. Jim. Jim doesn't be in. He's not inside these circles. These, these what interesting. What are doing on the news hmm? today? New Jonathan Majors Kane, the abuser. Let's find out. <laughs> Wes, tell us what you think. We was Kangs. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, although abuse is no laughing matter, uh, not at all. Just clowns. It's gonna always be a joke. Everything's gonna always be a joke to us, but we gotta laugh. Unfortunately, this is the situation, or so they say. And we don't. Have, I don't think we got enough uh, information just yet. Hell no. But it's worth talking about. For sure, he say, she say, and she say he did a number on her. And now, as you let me know, she recanted these statements. T yeah, talk, to me. talk to me. I don't know, man. It seemed a little fishy, bro. This just this whole little situation is wild. First, you go from statements is out there to recant statements. Then there's supposedly like physical evidence, but how do you get how do you recant physical evidence? I don't know. It's an interesting story, bro. It's, it's kind of crazy. Um, and it's, what's, what I find outrageous about it is I think, like, this is probably one of the fastest shits I've ever seen spread, like, through the internet, dog. I saw the first post, like, five minutes after mm -hmm. it dropped. And then after that, Complex. <laughs> um, I think it was first it was TMZ. Then it was, like, Complex dropped some shit. Uh, entertainment news dropped some shit. Uh local news like it shit is out it was so fast how like how that information spread and it's, it's funny jim said he's seen that shit yeah pretty wild man it's and 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 this is what i'm most curious about and please y'all in the uh comments please chime in please remember to share the link post it in your stories whatever you got to do we would love to have a bigger conversation but if it if she could recant like this, or if it comes out to find out that her allegations were, you know, her actually her accusations were not true, she should go to jail. Absolutely, she should go to jail. Yeah, there's got to be some repercussions for for such a big lie. He said bad news travels fast. Yeah, no, that's that's a fact. That's a big fact. That's a big. She fact. better go to jail. I want that to travel fast. She should go to jail because. His whole, his whole everything was under attack. So at least from what I saw, just on social media alone, what? they had film. They had three other filmmakers come out and say that they could verify his behavior from when he was at Yale and other times he was on different sets. Like people was really down on him. But if it comes out that this is not true, I want that same heat for every all all parties involved that was trying to defame him, bro. I think that's like a that's that's a possible court case, though, if I'm not mistaken, defamation of character. I want her to go to jail. I respect it. I totally do. Because look, she was messing with his livelihood, bro. Yeah. Long term, I mean, and that's the thing too, bro. Uh, so uh, I was I was uh, I was in conversation last night, and it was like, um, you know, the the first little bit of an article said that he was released. You know he was already released so damn they was just in in my man's apartment or or wherever wherever he's staying in the city mm -hmm. it was all it was like it had to be him and like 15 other people mm -hmm. facing back and forth like yo we got to do damage control we got to figure this out we got to do this that i don't know man um i'm personally like i, I mean for, for not having much stake in the whole thing it's just like you kind of got to just watch how this shit plays out that's it I'm like a, a a people observer, a people watcher. So it's crazy to see how, you know, it's pe people are so torn, you know, a whole lot of no, no, nah, yeah. Nah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I also would like to talk about how, uh, how fickle um, some of these people are because I'm seeing posts by some women that just a week ago, just a week ago, Jonathan Majors could bend, break they back, bend them up like a pretzel. They were saying all types of sexual innuendos on, on social media. Now, same people talking about, I always thought he was ugly. Oh, man, who knew? Hey, yo, bro, I'm telling you, if Jesus was around right now, bro, he wouldn't have made it through his whole fucking 33-year journey, bro. That's crazy. 
they'd had him fucking uh, condemned and canceled by year two. That's crazy, bro. Just is what it is. That's why I said in the beginning, bro. I'm voting for Kanye if this nigga really run for president. Hmm. He got. He, I gotta see. It. I gotta see it through. <laughs> I gotta see it through. Respectful. Respectfully. Respectfully, bro. Because what else we gonna do? <laughs> what else we gonna do? We live in a crazy, well, crazy time in life, bro. Um, I think I think the fact that that news travels so fucking fast is like a tell for one thing. Like, uh, him, so many things go viral on a day to day basis that most people know about, and like a handful of people don't. Hmm. But I feel like this is something that if if like if our grandparents were, was like still active right now, bro, could have walked downstairs and like, hey, grandma, you saw this? Shit? Yeah, I saw this on TV. They were talking about the guy that did. I promise you, bro. Old people know about this shit right now. Right, but now let's hop in conspiracy corner oh so do you think this is part of that humiliation ritual that they say black celebrities have to go through when they're joining the successful illuminati nah they ain't put them in a dress yet oh uh, they kind of did <laughs> okay okay yeah, it's possible yeah who knows Listen, man, one of the fucking funniest things that's going around uh, Twitter is like uh, the, that that Disney came through and cleaned up the whole situation for him. I believe it. I could, too. They got enough money. I believe <laughs> it. I <laughs> it's, like, it's like, yo, how your lawyers turn around in like less than 24 hours and say, we got video proof. We got we got shorty written, two written recant statements. We got the nigga that was driving the taxi we got the people that was outside like how the fuck hmm. overnight bro like mm -hmm. what do you mean? and what then else? say that they got pictures and they got all of these different things i don't know man man there's a lot of proof out there whether it's good proof or bad proof, but we can, again the the way that this shit is spread so fast, we'll probably find out more shit within the next couple of days. Yeah, yeah. I, this look, what we found out in twenty four hours. Yeah, true. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna have to cover their ass, I suppose. This shit almost more. Uh, it's heartbreaking as a shit that happened to Tyrese. Oh, <laughs> oh, I know. You know? Oh. You know, uh, for for the, the the unassuming and unaware, uh, Tyrese is uh he's he's an actor from the Fast and Furious franchise. He did Baby Boy. He he also was a singer in the nineties too. Some of y'all uh, might know signs of love, Megan. <laughs> Why are you trying to act like that nigga had hits though? However. <laughs> However, yeah, it's hard getting hit right now, bro. Yo, there's a video out with Shorty saying that 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 he wasn't her type, that she was more into Paul Walker. She said, rest in peace to Paul Walker, but I, I was more into him. He was more my type than you were. I was like, God damn. Now, all right, in that fucking video, that shit was kind of funny because um, well, it wasn't funny, it was interesting. He's he's telling Shorty don't touch me like over and over again, and she just keep on putting her hands on him like on some some like like trying to like soothe him. I don't know, fam. I think after that for that second don't touch me, you kind of gotta start looking at that a little bit differently, you know. Listen, we're gonna, if we're gonna let the fair be fair and the pendulum swing both ways, you kind of gotta act right. I applaud her for her honesty. At least she was being honest. But Tyrese just gotta stay off the internet. He gotta stay off the go make music, go do Fast and Furious 25. Just stay off the internet, bro. Because every time he pop up, they make him look like a damn fool. Yo, know, he he was like, uh, what the fuck he said? He's like, this went bad so fast. He's like, this went left so fast. <laughs> uh, fly on the wall when that conversation, when that video ended. <laughs> shit, this, this shit is nuts. Yeah, man. Life of black men ain't been too too easy. Outside of the fact that Kanye said the 21 Jump Street changed his, his perspective on Jewish people, man, I'm not going to lie. This whole week has been ridiculous. 
that might have been the most sane thing I heard outside of like, hey, good day. <laughs> Son, it is wild out here in the world. I'm sorry, yo, Tyrese. There's not a chance that you'll probably even listen to this. I got my own beef with you, Tyrese, from 2020. And if we ever give you ever see this, we get to sit down and talk about it. We can talk about it. But it <laughs> was some sucker shit you did, and it makes sense why you get treated like a sucker on the internet. So I will say that. Um, but you know, thoughts and prayers. Um, in other news, my boy and ladies and gentlemen in the in the chat, let's talk about this AI photography stuff once again. A lot of these people are worried um i'm not <laughs> i'm not worried about it i think this affects all the people that strictly only do portraiture that only do portraiture for brands uh people that like to take nice pictures of trees and mountains i think this affects y'all but people out in the street getting gritty getting it i don't i don't see how that's going to work and i also don't know how it helps people that don't don't build uh visual stories with with their photographs like uh i agree a hundred percent with what you just said um you know it's interesting like say i don't know say if you if you do you think you could get an ai to make one of your photos and all honestly one or a few of them i think ai could because i know i have some generic stuff in um uh, that i've shot that just was generic stuff um but I, I think what would, would I think if they type in like doing alt text, if they type in what the image has, they can try to get something that's close. But I think we don't work in the realm of where it's just one beautiful image. You know what I'm saying? We we work in like a series, and I think that's what we got them beat. Mm -hmm. I think. Uh, I'll agree with you there too. Like, uh, I was do that trying. I mean, some of my shit is. I can't even describe that shit. <laughs> like, so like I wouldn't even know what to put into the fucking the program to try and get my shit, you know? Like that's so that's really what it what it comes down to for me. I see a lot of people friend, I see the conversation like floating around um a lot. But yeah, man, that's why I think maybe it was like a week, two weeks ago where I was just there was a, a post like uh it was like unpopular opinion. Uh, what are some things about like some things about photography or photographers? Mm -hmm. And I was like fucking going off. Like I think I did like three or four tweets about that shit. I'm like, bro, like if you if you want to get paid, if you really want to get paid, just be technical. If you if you want to be irreplaceable, be technical. Be creative. Be yourself. You know, be versatile. Be lucid. Um. I don't know, man. AI is gonna is gonna I want to agree with you, but we did enough images and and we doomed, you think? I don't know, man. I don't know. There's no. also something inherently cold about AI images. Say what you want, there's something, there's a lack of something in it. I don't know if it's the humanistic approach to it, the fact that there was a human to human contact. I'm not exactly sure. But when you look at those photos, y'all can't look at that and tell me that is popping like that it's it's not i don't think so I, I, there was a guy on twitter who was doing a side by side comparison of like tell me which one's this photo is of, off my camera and which one is ai and all of the photographers identify which one is the photo and which one is ai which i thought was really interesting however when these brands are thinking about using it i.e levi's like they just recently put out um it's just you know it just looks off it just looks off to us but to regular people they don't care like the buyers or whatever they're gonna they're not gonna care and i think that's the problem like levi is going so hard to use ai to create diversity in their models instead of just hiring di on a diverse group of models <laughs> yeah even the idea is inhumane I get it. I don't know, David. I feel you on your skepticisms, but boy, if I don't, all right, how about this? If 
you think uh do you think an ai could create my uh my blank canvas series anybody that's seen it what about you chris you think that uh fucking ai could do those polaroids i made? nah they'll do a reasonable facsimile of it but But no. I don't know, man. It's it, it's it's spooky business. And you know, it's definitely interesting, but I don't think I don't think it can do um I think it's gonna have to bring more value to long form work, photojournalistic shit, stuff like that. I think it's gonna bring more value to that because people are gonna be itching for the real. Ultimately, AI images will be the standard. Maybe, <clears throat> maybe for fashion and brands or something, but art gonna always be art, bro. I think that's even in short. Well, I think it might be in short term, not long term. I think it'll just be for brands and stuff like that, where it's easy for them to save money and cut corners. Because you know they don't really give a fuck about none of the other shit. If this, they can use it to sell, they're gonna use it to sell. I care sure. them already use computer generated stuff to show you the things that they're building and for rooms and all that they've been doing that on their website for years already so this ain't no different from that um it just is what it is yo jim you want the link let's send jim the link Copy. you got it yeah i'll send it i'll send it to you on um on ig bro hopefully this works I don't know. I'm 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 very arrogant when it comes down to art, bro. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna be replaced by a computer anytime soon. It, things that's been replaced by computers feels like it. Yeah. You know, in, in my opinion, if it, it feels like it. Hey, uh, I sent you the link, Jim. Let me know if if that works or not. I hope it works. I know last time we was having an issue. Oh shit, boy, man. My fucking creakers is creaking, man. Look, my creakers are creaking. They used to do this shit like Goku, right before you, like I, this. All them stretches, bro. When I was a kid, I used to try to power up in the living room. I know a lot of people like to try to act like they too good for that, but boy, if Nick, one day uh, I tried I as a kid, and if one day if I would have powered up, I'd have been in some trouble. <laughs> Hey, you remember the video of my boy that tried to turn yep. Super Saiyan? <laughs> yep. yep, and I felt every bit of him. My name is, he said, my name is Jaden, and I am a Super Saiyan. <laughs> he was going. He was going. Uh, my boy. That's funny. Your old internet, man, for sure. We do don't go through a lot of fun. I don't, I don't got no code. Hold on. He said it's just taking him to the app. I don't understand why it's doing that. I got you. <laughs> that makes I'm just sense. Tech. Shit, hey, yo, Jim, is you, your area code 603? I feel like I don't got this shit. I might have this shit. I might not have this shit. I got you, bro. Don't worry about it. We gonna get you here. We get you locked up. Yeah, yeah. Why is she doing this? He's far on me. I just sent one as well. He says seven three two. Oh, that is not you. <laughs> That's off to some rando. Yeah, no. Nah. Actually, I should do that, right? Fuck it. Let's see who that is. Oh, no, okay. don't do that. <laughs> Yo, Jim, if you can't use the link uh from the DM I sent you, just text me your uh, your, your number from. We could definitely DM. get you in here on your email address for sure. Let me see who's that trying that for the email addresses. Keeps taking you to an app. That's what he said. 
Uh, DM me your email. I'm gonna send it. I'm gonna send it via email, and we'll see if that works. I don't know why. Yeah. I thought I had your email. Your technology. See how see how lackluster technology can be. You see, that's why I'm not worried. Yeah. And <laughs> why that could be so simple? I sent him the link. He should be able to join in. He got his life miserable. Do, 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 in this intermission, we'll tell you about upcoming events. So, tomorrow's Monday. The day after that is Tuesday. And after that is Wednesday. And thank you for stopping by our commercial break. Chris, back to you. <laughs> Yo, what's wrong with you, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Couple things, couple things. All right, I'm sending you the email right now, bro. If that don't work, we're gonna figure it out. But anyway, I don't really got nothing going on this week. I have a really important meeting Tuesday that I'm not about to discuss on this yet. This is for Patreon members. You could pay the Patreon directly to us. It's the real information that we got going on behind the scenes, but I'm really excited about that. Um, conversation and i reached out to there you go jim i reached out to all of the uh people that i respect photographically about their thoughts on how they think i should have what <laughs> up jim what's up you gotta, you gotta say something so people can see what we see how you doing man <laughs> you know what chris is giving me the same face that everybody on the train back from Queens was good. Bruh. <laughs> I was not expecting you to hop up here looking like Grimace, my man. What is going on, bro? Yo, uh, what, you Barney fart in your face, yo. <laughs> no, I uh I went to a um Indo-Caribbean uh parade and celebration today. Talk about that briefly before we get into this AI stuff, because it looks like it was from the, your face, it looks like it was fun. It looked like a shorty wearing purple paint was just rubbing up on you real close. I wish it was that much. It was that. No, actually, uh, it was called, what is it, Pangwa? Hold on. Let me see. Yeah, it was the Pangwa Parade, which uh, is a celebration of spring. And in Richmond Hill in Queens, there's a... Indo-Caribbean community and a, Caribbean, a community from Guyana also apparently. And so there was a parade that just went down uh, Liberty Avenue and it was all these floats and just families were outside and, and all the floats were all DJs and they were all playing like, like techno Bollywood movie, uh, music. Bang. <laughs> like they had, it was loud and just, Every float was playing that music. And um, so anyway, so I, I was taking a picture of a little boy and a little boy, um, you know, and his, and his family. And the little boy had a bag. They all have bags of this um, paint dust that they that they throw. It's like, a, you know, to celebrate the colors of spring. So that's why everybody had all these colors all over them. So the little boy, I'm holding my SL2, taking this picture, and the little boy throws a big handful of green dust at me. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, got on me, got on the SL2, but it was cool. We, I took his picture, took his family's picture, and then uh, after the parade, everybody started walking up like 125th Street to go over to Phil Rizzuto Park because then there's a big celebration over there, a big hang. That's where all the floats go down. And I was walking down the street, and it was a trip because um, there were not – let's put it this way. I was like – I was one of the – there was a handful of white people in the neighborhood, right? Mm -hmm. And very, very, very small handful. Everybody, everybody else were, were Indian, Caribbean. So I'm walking down the street and everybody was just kind of looking at me. And these kids came up and they just took all this paint and they said, come here, we got to paint you. And they painted my hair. They painted my face. They put paint, paint behind my neck. They just like totally covered me. And it, it was amazing. And then they were hugging me. That's and funny. it was it was it was amazing. It was amazing. And and you know, because 
I, w- I felt it. I felt kind of a little bit on the outside with the camera. You know, I, I didn't have a press badge on, and people were people were, were totally cool with me. But I felt a little bit on the outside, and then after I got painted, it was like just everybody was like, "You look amazing," because I think I had more paint on me than even than anybody who was there, because they just rubbed it all over my face, right? <laughs> So, uh, so the cool thing was I went and, and to the park and they had like a little playground outside where all the kids were playing. And then they had a, a music festival and just everybody was there dancing, and throwing paint at each other. And so I got a bunch of portraits and, and then more people painted me and just, you know, I, I just had paint all over me. And, um, the crazy thing was, so, so now I'm all painted and everybody's hugging me. It was like, the vibe was like so good. And then I get on the train and you know, this was like way, it was the last stop on the A train in Queens. And as I'm coming back towards the city and more people getting on the train, I see people looking at me because they don't have any context because this isn't like a well-known thing, you know? Yeah, you look, you you look like something out of Braveheart. So, you know, you gotta. So the trip was, so the the train was, the A train was fucked up. It was running on the F line. So I'm like, cool, the F gets me to where I want to be. But then at some point I went back on the A line. So I got off of Columbus Circle, right? And I get off of Columbus Circle, I'm walking next to Central Park, down past like the plaza, all those hotels and shit. And everybody was looking at me with such overt fear. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought about I, I wasn't even like high or anything, but this like totally entered my mind. I'm like, okay, so I went to this one place as I look. I got painted and then I was completely embraced and became part of that. Then I come back to the city and I'm painted and everybody looks at me and is like fucking scared of me. Nice. And it, it was just, fuck, it was a fucking trip. You know, it was just weird. I told my wife and she's like, well, of course you look crazy. And I'm like, well, what? I, I'm like, I, I don't look, I'm not saying anything. I've just got some, I've just got, got some color paint on my face. And she's like, no, you look fucking crazy. So, but it was, it was just, it was just a very interesting dynamic to kind of have those dualities in the mm-hmm. same in the same day. It was just very so in one moment you were being embraced cuz everybody kind of was painted just as painted like you knew what you was there for and you felt welcomed, right? Yeah. Then you get then you get on the train, you go back into the rest of the world and they're looking at you crazy because you got this different color on your face. Yeah. Welcome to your train ride of being black. <laughs> well, listen, I didn't want to say it because I because because I don't want to you know I don't want to marginalize you know just because I had some paint on my face and try to make comparisons and shit. But no. you know because because I can wa- I can wash this off and like whatever you know. But, Understandable. But in that moment, that's a you know what I mean. Not to serious us out, but like in that moment. That's essentially how we be feeling in other situations. Yeah, I, I mean, in my neighborhood. I'm well respected. Everybody, hey, what's up, man? And I go somewhere else, and yeah, and and you know, and literally, it was like I'm just walking down the street. I got my AirPods in. I'm just listening to some tunes. I got my glasses on. I got my camera on my side. Everybody's like looking at me sideways, getting out of my way, whispering to each other and shit. It was it was fucked. Yeah. Yeah. And to go from the context of like being in a place where everybody was hugging you and loving you and it was a celebration of spring and it was all this color and music and happiness mm-hmm. and then people are scared of you. It was fucked up. Well, I'm ready to see them photos whenever you're ready to post them. I'm sure they oh, look there. There's some there's some good pictures. But I gotta say, like I I I, I don't know. I I've been going through them since I got home and there's there's a few good ones, but I, I feel I got to get some emotional distance on it because I feel like what I felt while I was there, when I looked at the pictures, it, I don't feel like the pictures conveyed what it was when I was there, but that's a normal thing, I think, you know, but if you, if you get, if you come back from an event and you feel like you got the essence of what you experienced then, and I don't know whether it was just like a really intense experience. Maybe it was just a day and I just emotionally, it just was a great, I felt like it was a great day when I was there. And then when I saw the pictures, I was like, well, that's not what I felt, you know? So maybe I should have waited to edit, but I, I got a few good ones. Definitely. That's fair. That's fair. Cause if, if a lot of hate can make you feel a type of way from an event, I'm sure a lot of love can make you feel a way about an event too. The pension yeah. seems like ways. So yeah. take, take your time with it. Yeah. But, yeah. I, it, but it looked like it was fun though. It was great. It was great. And I'm, you know, the only thing I felt bad was like, I wanted to shoot and I smelled so much good food. And I was just, and I didn't eat anything. And I, I, you know, 
I ate, I ate my breakfast and I, was, I got home at like four o'clock and I haven't had any, I hadn't had anything since like eight thirty in the morning. I just, just fucking wolfed down a bunch of guacamole and chips when I came back. But like all this like really just curry and like roti and just all this all this shit people selling stuff in carts on the side of the street and I, I just didn't eat a bite of it. So I got to get back out to Richmond Hill anyway. Um, so this AI shit. This AI shit. So, go ahead. I think that, like, you know, I, 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 I have like this, this, this like deja vu all over again vibe because when I, I was, I got into new technology and and the internet and shit and multimedia in '93, and I used to go speak on panels. Like, it was this brave new world for the music business. Oh, we're gonna have, you know multimedia and VR and the internet and it's going to connect the world and everything. And we felt really optimistic about it. And there were all these opportunities and I only saw the best of possibilities in all of it. And I think now with AI, I just think that like, and web three also NFTs, everything. I think all this stuff, it's, it's kind of, they keep introducing things that they say are going to be so much better for our lives or some new iteration or this, this is going to be great, whatever. And usually what it ends up happening is it just becomes a more effective way to separate us from our money and our humanity and our connection to each other. Mm. So I think the technology, like in the beginning, the internet, like the people who worked with in the music business, they laughed. They said, this is a joke. You're a propeller head. They didn't understand what the impact was going to be. So they minimized it for the ass out of this for a long time. But now the music business is making more money than it ever has. If you're at a record company, I used to go to panels and they'd be like, oh, the music business is over. Labels are over. No artists are going to need labels. Now the, the money, the labels now are making more money than they ever made because of streaming, right? So in the beginning, all these technologies, they seem good, but they also seem like they're maybe not that threatening because they have limited capabilities. And I, I really think that like, what this does now versus what it's going to do in a few years with all the money they're throwing at it, it's going to be able to do some incredible shit. So, you know, it's, I think it's going to get to the point where it's going to be hard to tell the difference and, and there's just going to be so much money behind it. But the reason why I wanted to, to tap in was, you know, you said something about people, there's going to be some people that always want the, the real thing or people are always going to want the real thing. And I agree with you, but I think there's a caveat with that, which is I think some people are going to want the real thing. Mm -hmm. You know, the, there's a lot of people who willingly, you know, with the AI apps now, with TikTok, all this other shit, hand over their personal information, hand over their humanity, don't talk to people, don't get out in the real world, you know, decide everything because of some organization news organization or trend telling them what they should think mm -hmm. and smart people or people that are enlightened are going to be able to resist this and see it for what it is and want that real human connection but i think the overwhelming majority of society is going to sink right into this shit and it's going to become so much the fabric of what we do and i think it'll make what we the three of us and our you know the people who think the way that we think about art and photography, I think it'll make what we do more important and more valid and more important. Yeah. But, uh, for a, a portion for us and for a portion of the audience, but I think every, everybody, you look at what happened with the internet, you look at what happened with social media, everybody is just lining up to just, they're, they're like pigs at the fucking trough. Take my personal information, take my humanity, take my money. The make convenience of it all. I get it. Make me stupid. Yeah. It's like, I really love my grocer on the corner and I want him to go out of business, but I'm still going to order my shit from Amazon. You know, I mean, we're, you know, everybody's guilty of that shit or most everybody's guilty of that shit. So I think this stuff is going to be overwhelming before we even realize it. I don't think it's going to supersede what we do, but I don't, I don't think it's going to make our struggle any easier. Yeah. Anyway. No, you. That, that, I mean, you bring up a good point. You got something to say about that, Wes? Not yet. Um, like, I don't want um, people to think that this is like an anti-AI type of stance I'm taking. I'm not taking that. I've seen the benefits of AI in other things beyond photography. Like, they found cancer in a lady four years before 
it even really turns into cancer. You know what I mean? Like they have they have AI doing surgery on certain things and doing a damn good job at it. Well, I want to have surgery done on me by AI, nah. Um, but you know, I understand the world that we're going into. But as far as you know, it goes with photography, it's much like what you said with the music, you know, the music company, they're making the most money they've ever made right now. But there was there was a pocket of time where they were scrambling because they didn't know what was going on. And I think that is when you have that fight between big business and creatives to whoever gets to that end goal first. Now, if, I think if the creatives had got ahead of that, um, that shit with the music business, like how it is and how they started making money or making streams worth one cent, if the creatives would have got to that and was able to put their own price on those streams, how different would that look for record labels? Would that have made the record labels go extinct? I think it's the same thing with this. Like now they're gonna be able to really manufacture these modeling shots, these fashion shots, these these portrait shots or whatever. And yeah, people are gonna line up for it because they lined up for Photoshop and Facetune and all this other shit, they don't care. But I think it's gonna put more value on what we do in the sense of how we work in the more reportage, photojournalistic, um series way that we work with, with with photos that can't be replicated because the beauty behind those photos is being there in real time be having that interaction having to have that you can't you if i if i'm going to cover how they're doing housing in a certain area ai can't replicate they're going to just show you photos of certain shit, but they can't they're not getting in there they're not and those and then if you did see it from an ai you're not going to believe it because it's ai generated yeah that loses the feeling. I feel for the portrait and landscapers, but wedding photographers too. Oh yeah, damn, that's gonna suck. But that's a big. But you know, the, when you when you look at what's coming, not only AI but then robotics, and also nanobots, they're gonna they're gonna they're they're basically gonna have tiny little robots that are like the size of insects that'll just take a pile of metal. And in two weeks, they'll build a fucking skyscraper with, 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 no, with no issues. Nobody going to take a coffee break and putting in the wrong size wiring or using, using substandard material, shit like that. And the fucking skyscraper will just be up. Or they'll, you know, a building will be on fire and they'll send a bunch of these shits in there and they'll just put out the fire. So truck drivers, there ain't going to be no job doing truck, driving trucks. There ain't going to be no jobs flipping burgers at McDonald's. But maybe what you'll be able to do is if you have like a real – artisanal burger place you know that that's what you're gonna have to do you're gonna have to beat this shit by being more human and more authentic much and, more slower and, and more real yeah. and and that's why i you know i don't know these photographers that are really embracing all this shit i think at some point at some point it, it's it almost becomes like you know you it almost becomes like you're replacing like when you were talking on the last one about getting bionic parts in your body, right? Yeah. If you start, if you start replacing parts of your creative mindset and letting something else take over for you, even if you're steering it or whatever, does that take away some of your, the humanity and what you do? Does that take away the essence of, of what you're doing? So I don't, it's like, you can't be a little bit pregnant, you know? <laughs> like, I mean, I, I, I use it. <laughs> I use AI in, 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 in Lightroom for noise and shit, you know, yeah. like I use Topaz to get rid of noise. So, mm -hmm. but I'm not saying like make somebody look happy or put a headdress on this person who doesn't have one or shit like that. I think that that's kind of a, a slippery slope, but, and then I don't know, I think augmented reality cause like we've been talking about virtual reality for like 30 something years. You ever see that movie disclosure with Michael Douglas? I don't, I don't think I did. Uh, this, is some, this, this, this is some funny shit. I worked for this guy at Poly who, like, he would go see movies. And, you know, in the 90s, they had all those movies, like Sandra Bullock movies that talked about, that, like, gave these, like, idealized versions of what the internet was and what it could do. Because it was, like, uh -huh. Hollywood's idea of what, what new technology was. Like, Johnny Depp movies or Keanu Reeves movies with, like, crazy technology that didn't exist. So my boss would go see this shit and he'd come back and he'd say, oh, I want you to set up my laptop like that. And I mean, yeah, because I was I was doing technology anyway. Um, but the augmented reality, when you're gonna when they're gonna be like layering all this data on top of 
reality. Mm -hmm. That's, I think that's because if you think about it now, everybody's sta staring at their screens all day long, right? And having to touch the screens and they're all like looking at stuff. If you all of a sudden put a pair of glasses on and you've got all this real time data just layered on top of reality. So you're not like looking at a phone and you're just like walking around and there's all the shit messages, TV, video games, sale pricing on shit. Here's where the train is. You don't have to pay anything. You're just walking around. That's going to be a, that's going to change everything too. That's because gonna be the next. That's gonna be the next. Thing. Humans is gonna be weird, bro. The yeah. next evolution for humans is gonna be weird. I keep yeah. Telling people. Bro, yeah. Uh, yo, I'm t Chris. Nigga, listen, man. Fucking just replace my eye with a with a fucking a uh, come a uh, goddamn digital eye, bro. Give me the nano eye. I hear you. That should sound cool, bro. But it's lit. Yeah, I, 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 I just want to photograph the surgery. Is all I want to do. Yeah, That's you, you, you know, the only is allowed. I'm fine with that. I'm, you know, like I'm not mad at augmented reality in that sense because I can see where you can use that to be beneficial for other things. You know, like I wouldn't mind, but getting something as niche as glasses with a, a built-in light meter in it so i could just look at the scene and already know what to set my film camera to to take the shot and you keep film alive i don't want my eyeball fucked with to do that like no, all right you can I get the shot like, with our light meter now I'm you'll not. just you'll get contacts that you'll put in your eye that'll have all that shit in the contact lens and then you'll you'll throw it away too close to man's eyeball bro if that shit's short circuit or something i'm not taking the chance you're talking to somebody who my my eyes is my money I'm not taking no risk. With yeah, bro, we, listen, bro, we insured before we do the surgery. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but if something happens in my eye and I can't take pictures no more ever again, I don't care about the bionic. You got, you got the other one. You got the other one. I mean, I'm trying to keep both of them things. <laughs> I'm trying to keep both of them if I could. But it's like uh, all of these changes is. There's, there's pros and cons to everything, as we already know, as we have already realized in our lives as grown men here. Just put me in the Batman Beyond universe already. It's, I it, it's going in, I, I think it's going to go in a, a tamer version of the direction of like that Altered Carbon show. Maybe. Or because maybe they're still America. What, what's, I think what's happening now is there's these ultra rich technology people that are so fucking rich and they're going to put everybody out of work. Be through AI and robots and nanobots. And so then to, in, to kind of, you know, there'll be all these people that are upset or don't have anything and they're trying to get rid of all the, you know, social programs. So you're going to have all these people have nowhere to live, have no way of making any kind of income. And if that happens, there'll be a revolution. So what they'll do is they'll, that's why you're hearing them float shit like, Oh, basic income for everybody let's give everybody a thousand dollars a month so it's like everybody's like yeah i'm gonna get like four grand a month of basic income to live and meanwhile they got like fucking trillions of dollars right mm -hmm. so we're all be we'll all be down here looking for cheap thrills and technology will be like you know it'll, it'll be like that and the people who have the crazy money will live way up above all the slop and the pollution and all that other trivial shit and they'll have these like lives like gods but what was in alter carbon the way they got their kicks was they they wanted the real right because mm -hmm. if you could have anything you could have any any technical thrill spend your money on anything what's what's the most thrilling thing something that's real hunt a real animal get a real photograph have mm -hmm. a real meal cooked by somebody instead of by a machine a photograph there you go that's gonna that remind me of the movie um equilibrium haven't seen that with, what's, with Christian Bell and uh, what's homie Tay Diggs? Mm -hmm. So, so in this world, they they had to take this drug. They had to take this drug around the clock that kind of like nullifies their feelings toward like art. Like they couldn't have art in their homes or feelings, none of that shit. Oh so shit! If you got caught with paintings and poetry, you would like <laughs> you would burnt to death pretty much. You was crucified. And um, the police that they used to catch these people were are called clerics. They wear suits. They come around, murder you, whatever. They find you using this stuff. But the main character, who Christian Bell is, I think, and it is Christian Bell, right? I'm not. Wrong. I said it's Christian Bell and Tate Diggs. You got it. He he um he starts feeling like he stops taking his dosage and, but he's a high ranking officer in this system. So you know you got to navigate that. I'm not gonna give out the plot of the story too much. So y'all can watch the excitement in that. 
But overall, it was just him trying to feel and then finding out other people was feeling and hiding it, but they in higher ranks. And it starts getting real crazy. But the main thing about it is like it was just the numbing of feelings. Yeah. That's it felt very cold, much like what these AI photos remind me of. Very cold. Like did you well, if you want to really throw back, you ever hear of a movie called Logan's Run? I heard of it, but I never watched it. Oh fuck, dude. This came it came out in like 1976, and basically it's a story about everybody has to die when they're I think when they're 30. They have a crystal in their hand. Mm -hmm. And when they reach different stages in their life, the, the crystal changes color. And their whole life, everything's provided for them by a machine. It's like a post-apocalyptic uh, apocalyptic society. God, all man, the food, they get they get all the all the food given to them, and all they they have like orgies. They just it's just all just pleasure and entertainment. Everybody's like young. They they do genetic engineering, so nobody's like sick. Nobody isn't good looking. They go into these places where like they spray this like pheromone, so everybody gets all horny <laughs> on each other. And yeah. so, but then they oh, find out some man, people they look crazy. So when they're, but when they're exactly yeah 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 mm -hmm. so, so check this shit out so when they're 30 they're the, the thing in their hand turns red right and mm -hmm. then they have to go on something called carousel where they wear these like crazy masks and robes and they go around this like crystal flower looking thing and it has some anti-gravity shit and they spin around and they say oh you're going to be reborn and then these like laser beams come out and like fucking blow the people up as they're floating up in the air and they're like oh and now you're going to be reborn as like you know and you'll come back and what it is, it's just basically the machine, it's population control. So there's these guys named Sandmen who are like these cops who some people who are runners who at 30 don't want to die. They try to escape and then the Sandman chase them down and and terminate them. Right. So the, the machine hears that there's that some people have escaped and so it tells the sandman i want you to go undercover and go find these people and he's only like 25 and it changes his shit to red so they're like so you're gonna have to run and you can't tell any of the other sandman and you got to find out where this underground network is and and all this crazy shit happens after that but it's a it's a dope fucking movie i mean it's mid 70s so the effects aren't amazing but they're good I still watch the first Star Wars. That's what I'm worried about. I'm looking at the stills right now for from the uh, IMDb. The Same. Nuts. Same. And I was I'm That's also looking to see if they did a re a remake, and it looks like they uh it, they said it was adapted into a, a TV show. Yeah, it lasted. I was a kid when it when it was on TV, and it sucked. It was nowhere near as good. But <laughs> um, it's it's it was a book first, and then they made a movie out of it. But have um, you have you either okay. one of you read any, any books by uh, Philip K. Dick, the guy who no? Okay, so there's Philip two Dick. authors. There's two authors that like if you're into dystopian shit, like the two guys who are like the, the pillars of dystopian shit are Philip K. Dick and J. G. Ballard. Yeah, you know that movie Crash. James Spader yes. was in it. It's about people who like crap. They get turned on by automobile accident, automobile accidents. They like crash into people on purpose and then get deformed and have sex and shit that's okay, jg okay. that's jg ballard and you you've seen blade blade runner of course right yes yeah. okay so philip k dick wrote blade runner it was called do androids dream of electric sheep yeah i see it right here but <laughs> if, if you want to read some, and you heard of the man in the high castle right i didn't but i did hear about a skin of darkly Oh yes, Scanner Darkly is a movie. Keanu Reeves was in that. That's an amazing, amazing movie. That's based on one of his books too. Um, anyway, all this shit we're talking about about humanity being replaced and about technology, kind of people being slaves to technology, and then ultra rich people controlling everybody's lives. These guys were writing about this shit in like the seventies and predicting mm -hmm. all, of, all of this shit. And it's it's all dystopian, amazing amazing shit i mean we basically in dystopia just look nice just look nice yeah <laughs> gentrified dystopia well, just got a nice look to it That's well I, I was having this conversation a couple years ago at west at west old spot and i remember bro i was telling you like what's gonna happen with all of this virtual reality all of this shit that people are just gonna become big fat nasty sloppy slobs in their mom's basement oh hell yeah with sex suits and all of that for virgin and never going outside, never meeting nobody, smelling like Cheetos and meatloaf. It's gonna be really bad. It's gonna be really bad, bro. 
and they really gonna be in the matrix and that and that's some spooky shit. <laughs> well, that's one thing that i talk about the most i got I've, I've been asked a lot about like uh, how do i feel being back here as opposed to being in the city and the biggest difference is how quiet it is bro this, this is a dense ass city but nobody's outside you know so whack Swag. I be walking by and sometimes I'll see people I'll see people like in front of their big ass screens with you know the streamer headphones on and they're fucking sitting there gaming and shit. I'm like, God damn, bro. Like close your window if you about to get down like this at <laughs> least. I think that I think this is exactly what you need because I realized that was exactly what I needed. I came down here thinking the same shit, like yo nobody's doing that when i started like on a wednesday like nobody's outside what are people doing like this is crazy and then you start looking at things differently and it it takes it up a notch it takes it up a whole notch because i had to change my whole style in which i made work to make yeah. work i know don't get me wrong i'm right there with it i'm i'm, I'm at that change point but it's still it's just eerie bro like bro i i, I, I like sounds you yeah, know I, capture I, what I, is I'm a sonic, I'm a sonic uh individual, bro. Like if if when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is play music. That's guaranteed to get me moving. You know? Um it's it's just weird, bro. Sometimes it's like you won't even hear a car drive by for like two blocks. And I'm like, nigga, this is Patterson. Why is it like this right now? It 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 it'll get interesting. It'll get better, man. You just gotta oh, take sure. it for sure, cause uh, it, the heat is coming in. So we gonna get some more uh, some more music in the streets. Sorry. But then again, also, it, is it maybe? Um, I had to I had to go down to my uh, to Charlottesville, Virginia, for a couple of years because I was working up here and the, and a uh, company went out of business, and so I went. My wife was going to residency at UVA. And mm -hmm. I went down there with like nothing, just packed my shit in my car and I hung out there. A and I loved being down there because it was so chill. But what was kind of cool about it was when I finally came back, it was like I had kind of hoovered out my brain and I had changed my perspective on things. So when I came back, I appreciated things maybe I didn't appreciate before. And then I just heard things I didn't I didn't hear before, you know? Mm -hmm. So sometimes sometimes it's good to 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 almost like fast. Or like you're 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 getting like some kind of mental fast, and then when you go back, your shit's gonna be sharper, and you're gonna notice shit you didn't notice before. Yeah, bro, I haven't I haven't been active outside in like over a month now, and it's intentional, but oof, boy, itching, <laughs> itching. So I'm, I'm happy the world. Well, winter winter time too, right? I mean, everybody's been everybody's no. been inside because it's been cold and shit. Nah, bro, come on. I'm just like y'all, bro. I, I, I would be outside every day if I didn't have other shit to do. Um, it's just I I gotta put energy in a different area. That's all. That's fine, bro. Photography should never feel like it is your life. Photography should become your life. Your life should just accompany photography. It's not really I know, <laughs> man. I've been I've been snapping things. It's just I, not I, I, I know you. I know. I know you have. I understand. I know you want to be outside. You want the action just to rumble the grumble of the grounds. I feel you, but you know, you gotta move this right now. Um silk is done. Uh should have my test book soon. Okay, copy. Yeah. Should be seeing what that looking feels like soon. I started a conversation um with a small publisher see how that shit goes we're gonna see things Good. are moving gears are turning it's not like i'm not doing shit you know it's just i'm doing other shit <laughs> name it again name it again we see i see what you're doing man i'm looking on your feed and seeing all that everything on your walls yeah i'm sticking to it you're man. not you're not with the meatloaf and the cheetos no I not know. at all <laughs> not at all i, I can't have hey i'm gonna in my circle I'm gonna I'm gonna jump because I want to listen to you and I want to listen to myself. All right, but I'm gonna stay on. But I'm, nah, I'm gonna. We about we about, to, we about to end it. We already at the 60 minute mark, so we getting ready to get off. So you know, um, thank you to everybody that chimed in. Thank you, Jim, for always popping up on Sunday to fuck with us. J Rock. I'm gonna show you one thing before I go. All right. What's I up? don't know if you can see this. Damn. That's how they was giving it to you. Let me see what the camera looked like. 
the, the, uh, the cameras. No, the, you know the funny thing is that the camera was fucking trashed when I was there, and I was re I was shitting my pants. But I don't know if you can tell, but like, there's like a you see little specks of paint on it at all? Yeah, I, I see a little bit right there, but right. Um, but like there were mad strong streaks of paint on it, and I was like, I'm like I'm gonna have to change my, I'm gonna have to clean my fucking sensor. I, I know uh, I'm going to have to, but and uh, the camera just looked like hammered paint was all over it but it the wind just blew all the shit off there's hardly anything on it now nice so i mean i, don't know. I changed from a 50 to a 75 at some point down like a, a an alley that hopefully didn't have any paint blowing around but we'll see i'd be really shocked if i don't have to clean the sensor on the thing but anyway so good but thank you bro thank you and it was it was good uh it was good talking to you. and 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 uh west i have not been out to see your show in Brooklyn yet? And I know it closes at the end of the week, so I'm going to get after this week to take a look at to take a look at your photographs, just for anybody who's listening. And I know, I know, I've seen other people post pictures of the work, but I want to see it in the real. So, if you can, I understand. If you can't, I understand. I appreciate the love either way. All right, all right, gentlemen. Peace. Always Yo, a pleasure. Thanks for letting me intrude. Thanks everyone for stopping by. Don't forget to leave a comment on your way out. Share, tell somebody about us, you know. Um, happy Sunday. And if you're going to get down to the self care part, enjoy it. Take your time today. Take your time. Please. If you are, um, if you're trying to talk to us some more, you probably found us on social media. So just reach out. Uh, succession is on this week. Yes, sir. But we gotta before we can't we save that for another time. Hey y'all, next week, smoke section every Sunday. We fuck with y'all for fucking with us. Y'all been great. It's been great. We out of here, man. We gotta get up out of here. We we gotta we gotta go. So God bless. Oh shit, we still public, nigga. How you just gonna leave me? And I'm public. Damn. All right, well, good night. Goodbye. And good luck.